TGIF, it is Friday on The Exchange. Today's episode of The Exchange is brought to you by the Ohio Neck and Back Pain Relief Centers. Scott M. Gray, D.C., across from the Marion Center between TSC and Kroger. Call 740-386-6580. And Butte Cyrus Placemats. To put an ad in, call 419-562-8473. Located at 116 Wayne Avenue in Butte Cyrus, also on the net, at BuCyrusPlacemats.com, and we certainly thank each and every one of them. Joined on this Friday by Charlie Evers, Mary Ann Michaels, First Lady of Dow- Dance, Martha Douse, and Kate Jacob. Before we go any further, last week I learned of uh, passing. Uh, that was uh, certainly close to me, Charlie. Certainly will have something to say about this. Uh, Cecil Ayler. Uh, the guy who uh, hung off the bridge, no better way to put it, hung off the bridge in Prospect for years and years and years, called every morning to the radio station to know how much uh, rain fell in, in Prospect. He was such a good guy, and he did that well into his 80s. He did that when I was at the radio station. I looked forward to his calls every morning. He was truly a unique fellow. And, uh, boy, Charlie, last time I think I saw Cease, we were together doing an interview on heart disease. That's right, we did. Uh, where was that? That was at the hospital. The hospital. We, we did, did that, that at the yeah. hospital. Right. And uh, Cease and I both have had similar problems that way. But he was certainly a wonderful man and so devoted to his uh, record keeping for the uh, United States Weather Bureau. And that uh, bridge over in... Um, uh, prospect is named for Cease, and right. boy, we will miss him. He was a, a class act uh, in every sense of the word. Charlie, uh, sad. That's right. Absolutely. So we'll remember him well. Right. Charlie, uh, what's the fascinating fact for today? Well, let's see. Uh, most all of you have been to, to Chicago, haven't you? Sure. And you've seen the Sears Tower. Yes. Mm-hmm. This huge tall. Do you know that Sears Tower would be standing upright like that if it wasn't for the city of Marion? Really? Yes. yes. Boy, now that's... Underneath the Sears Tower are a series of pylons. A pylon is a uh, very thick metal casing. Mm-hmm. And they were sunk into the bedrock and filled with cement. And then the Sears Tower built atop those. And those caissons uh, were built on uh, North State Street, right by the overpass by the Slob and Beers Company. And they're still doing that. They're still making uh, pylon supports for skyscrapers in Marion. The the Slob and Beer Company? Slob and Beers. (laughs) Slob Slob and Beers. Yeah, right. What a name. (laughs) Yes. uh, They're one of the uh, very unique company, and they're able to roll this heavy steel, and uh, it's really great, but uh, they're an important item. You know, most people in Marion don't really don't realize this, but... Marion's a kingpin for a lot of different things. Absolutely. Uh, have you ever been up in the Sears Tower? No. I was I in. Have. Yeah, it, it's it's a trip. They put you on the elevator with about fifteen thousand people, and uh, you know everybody smell when you get off the elevator. Everybody has their own distinct smell. You are cramped in there like bugs. Is there more than one elevator going up, or do you have to get off and get on another? Or the one going down is less full than the one going up. I went up the Empire State Building to the top of that. And I had to switch elevators once or twice. But I'll never forget the up there on top of the Empire State Building, wind is blowing like 45 miles an hour. Wow. You know, I went to the Sears Tower in August, it must have been. It was one of the warmest days in the history of Chicago. And I had been walking around. I didn't rent a car. And I was walking around Chicago, and I was drenched in sweat by the time I got there because I'd been walking around all day. Wasn't too happy about going there. A friend of mine wanted to go up in it. And I walked up to the counter, because you really have no way of knowing how to get to the top, because it is a business building. Mm-hmm. And I walked in, I walked up to the counter, I hadn't had anything to drink, I was hot. I said, how do you get to the top of this thing? <laughs> and the lady looked at me and she said, 
I'll tell you how you get to the top. First you calm down, and you go over there and you sit down, and then you come back once you're a little cooler, and then we'll tell you how to get to the top. <laughs> so I'll never forget that about the Sears Tower. Well, I went to a very famous tower. What? The Leaning Tower of Pisa. No kidding. Oh. Oh. All the way up to the top, like this, the whole way up. <laughs> and I mean, when I got back down, I couldn't even walk because, I mean, it was like this. I mean, and as soon as we got back to the States, we realized that they closed that tower right after we left because it was unsafe. Uh -oh. <laughs> now they re repaired it. Yes, they pumped some in underneath right. it. But, but I felt so proud of myself to go all the way up there and le leaning the whole <laughs> way up. Think if it had fallen, though, while you were in it, Marianne, you could have yeah. been buried on the grounds of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Uh, no, yeah. thank you. You sure? Well, no, let's see what we do. I want to get into the current event this week because, boy, no, this Friday, because it is very interesting. I found this fascinating. An investigation is underway into a mother who has shown in a who has shown in a photo on national TV giving anti-wrinkle Botox injections to her eight-year-old daughter, a beauty pageant contestant. Even though the shots can be painful and aren't recommended for anyone under 18 for cosmetic purposes, Trent Rohrer, executive director of the San Francisco Human Services Agency, told KGO TV that officials want to talk with Carrie Campbell and her daughter Brittany. It's pretty unusual for a mom to be injecting an eight-year-old with Botox and certainly is grounds for an investigation, Rohrer told the TV station. He did not immediately return a call from the Associated Press seeking comment. The mother appeared with her daughter on ABC's Good Morning America. She said she enrolls Britney in beauty pageants and got the idea to give her Botox from other pageant mothers. It, it's a tough world in the, this is the quote, it's a tough world in the pageant world, I'm telling you, the mother told the program. The kids are harsh, and just recently, the child has been taken away from the mother. Oh, well, Marianne, yes. what do you think? I, I, first of all, children grow up too fast as it is, and I think these beauty contests for these little girls, I'm sorry, I don't approve of it. I think it's wrong, and I think these stage mothers are terrible. And it, did you see where they had these bras that were for the little girls? What? I mean, that was the coup d'etat as far as I'm concerned. Yes, they actually had bras that were stuffed, you know, and made them look, I mean. But didn't there used to be age limits for beauty pageants? See, that's what I'm like. How can you enter somebody in a beauty pageant who is eight years old if there isn't a beauty pageant that will accept eight year olds? No, they have the little t teeny boppers or whatever they're called. Why? And, they, and I don't know why they do that. They're starting these, you know, and the, the emphasis is on their look. These little girls have these hairstyles. They wear lipstick. I mean, uh, they probably wear eyeshadow and everything else. I, to me, I would never have my daughter. If I, I, if I had a daughter, I would never have my daughter enter one of those pageants. I, I don't approve of it personally. Martha, you had uh, have dealt with a lot of kids over the years, young and old. Um, what do you think of a mother giving her eight-year-old child, well, she didn't give, but went and had it given to her child Botox? Well, do you know what I had? What's that? I had royalty of Ohio. I went to all 88 counties and had pageants. And I had a ball. I had one at Ohio University. I had one that was named MacArthur in MacArthur County. And their parents had a little Miss Royalty of Ohio, Maca MacArthur County. Now, do you I had We Miss Marion. Do you support those beauty pageants, Martha? Well, we didn't do, we didn't have mothers like that. What would you say if you knew a mother was doing that to a pageant that you were involved ridiculous. in? Ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Kate, what do you think of that? You Maybe kids one day. Uh, I think that parents need to be careful of crossing the line between living, it, living uh, through their kids again, reliving their childhood and making them be the best um, at whatever it is. And... It's important for a kid to be a kid and not to have to go compete. Through, yeah. Not have to right, compete. Right. 
it, it, and competition is good because it helps you figure out what you're good at, but it's only good to a certain extent. But what, well, who, where's that line drawn in every household? And if the child does want to compete, what do you do? Um, I, I don't know. I feel like I, it still is up to the parent because if the kid wants to compete, then it'd be, um, he, the child would get that idea from how their parents raised them. And now, they're that young still. If parents it, are playing a very important role in how you're going to act for the rest of your life. Now, if it is up to the parent then, if the parent says you can get the Botox, is that okay? It I sounds like it means Botox for right, any reason. But that's your opinion, not the mother's. I like Miss America pageants. We went, Joe and I, Hal and Margaret Hazlett, Grace and Don Mack went to Atlantic City. We saw Christy Cook. And did we have fun? And I don't that's think she different. did. Yeah, yeah I don't that's think she different. did any of that. But I mean, Marianne, I mean, let's be serious here. Would you like somebody in it? This sounds crazy, Botox to a child. I'm not saying that's right. That's not right. But if somebody intervened in what you were doing with your child, to my knowledge, this is not illegal. I, I don't know a law that says you can't do it. People, people, younger people, how old do kids get for cell phones now? I think that's crazy. I don't that's own a ridiculous. cell phone. But you know what? Kids have cell phones at eight years old. Oh, but a no. pageant is, is giving a child the idea that looks are more important and and at a very young age and i i i personally uh, i wouldn't like that uh, i would not like to have my child in a beauty pageant now when they're kate's age or you know when they're 18 19 and yeah, they're competing for um you know miss ohio i think that's great and i'm very proud of christy cook because she was miss ohio um at the time she was christy um Smith. No, no, she was Christy Cook. Christy Cook. Christy that's, right. Now. that's right. Her mother's maiden name was Smith. No, it was Christy Cook, right. And uh, no, that's fine. But I think for a little young girl to be wearing lipstick and worrying about her hairstyle and uh, having a mother that pushes her into these pageants, I think it's wrong. You know, though, it's interesting, uh, Marianne, when I, I mean, we say it's okay for the 18 year old and so on and so forth. But, you know, there's something to me just generally wrong about anybody getting on a stage in a swimsuit and being judged by 40 or 50 people. Even if you're 18 and can make that decision on yourself, uh, for yourself, I think that's what leads to the Botox. I don't think this was the girl's first pageant. I think maybe, she says, the other mothers. So this is happening that she just got caught on camera. Mm -hmm. Other mothers are doing it. I think when you lose one and your child is upset, just like the child loses the baseball game, whatever, you take them home and you throw the ball around. And beauty, I hate to say, is very important in this society. It is, and it's sad because there, there are more important things than, than the outward appearance. It's what inside you counts. But I know that it's very important to be attractive and to have all the right clothes and everything. Uh, but that has to be tempered with a person having other qualities. I think, well, I don't know. Charlie, weigh in. You haven't weighed in on this. Well, there's a, <clears throat> a couple of different levels. There's a level like Martha's involved with, where children are learning to dance and they're mm -hmm. learning to be in front of people and to conduct themselves. But then there's the professionals, the women who, right. uh, like the one with the Botox, that they push their kids to national competition and other things. And the kids, <laughs> uh, well, look at the, I keep thinking of the one, uh, what was her name? Joan Benet. John Benet Ramsey. John Benet Ramsey. Ramsey. Yeah, that poor kid. But she was one of those being pushed very mm -hmm. hard. Mm -hmm. But here on the local level, I love to see kids performing. Well, uh, performing, yes. Gets them, gets them over a lot Didn't of Didn't we the have performing. a good program Saturday yes, night? Yes, I was, yes. Performing. My, my granddaughter performing. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what I, even on local level, recent years, I don't know when Martha was doing them, if it was different or not, 
But on local levels, I would much rather go to a dance competition. Mm -hmm. Harding has a great thing like Panorama. Oh, I love that. I, Isn't that I, wonderful? I, I've always loved the um, uh, school plays, mm -hmm. the, the big productions. Mm -hmm. I don't give a flip-flop about any beauty pageant in this mm -hmm. town. Not one. I could mm -hmm. care less to go But to remember Marilyn Nesky? Now see, yeah, back in the 1930s, you know, Miss, Joe's, America, Miss America. Joe's, she taught dancing across from the Lutheran Church. My husband's uncle taught ballroom for her. Oh, how neat. And she sent Uncle Carl her gown that she was Miss America in. Uncle Carl gave it to me. Do you know what I did with it? What'd you do with it? Took it to the historical society. And that's a good place for it to be. Isn't and that wonderful? I'm so just, happy to well, do that. Didn't you and George Casotas go up on her porch? Yes, yes we did. Yes. Well, <laughs> Marilyn Meske, and I'm glad you brought that up, Martha, because a lot of people forget we had a Miss America from Marion that's right. in the 1930s. 1938. Yeah. yeah, that's very important. But I think it's gotten hand. I don't think in out of hand. I don't think in Marilyn Meske's day. No, and I hate no. to say this, and mm -hmm. heaven forbid if anybody hears this, but I know for sure that there are beauty pageants in this town, other towns, that are somewhat rigged by the judges that are chosen. Mm -hmm. And how does that make you feel that maybe you're not the best? Mm -hmm. uh, or maybe you were the best and the best did not win because the mother is a judge. I think that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. That is. How can well, the mother I think be a it's judge? ridiculous what dance teachers judge their own students. Yes. I think you're right. And that's happened here mm -hmm. in this town. You would never do that, would you? Heavens no, it's not my job to do. Mm -hmm. I would be in the audience. That's a not good judge. That's a good lesson to learn, I think. Absolutely. And the other side of this I want to touch on because there is the flip on this. Uh, the child's been taken away from the mother at this point because of that. Uh, as horrible as it is, as bad as it is, I'm not sure that's the way to do it. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Marianne? I think that's pretty extreme. I really do. Um, but um, I think they, there should be some regulations in the uh, pageant rules that would outlaw anything like that. Um, but no, I wouldn't take the child away from the mother. No, that's too extreme. She's just, I mean, it's not a smart thing on her part to do that, but uh, I think as Kate brought up, which I thought was a, a good thing to say, that some parents live through their children. And, uh, well, I mean, we all live through our children, but I mean, it, it, sometimes they want them to uh, succeed when the child doesn't necessarily care about that. And but they want it for their own Satisfaction, and yes. I thought that was a good point that you brought up. Scott, what? we're starting royalty of midget football. You can be a queen, you get a crown, a banner, and you have you go to the games every Sunday, and you root for your team, and we make money off of it. And it's not based on looks. No. See, no. I think that's the way to go. You're part of the football yes. players. Every yes. little girl, mm -hmm. if she wants to be the queen, should get a chance to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, Kate, what do you think about taking this child away from the mother? Uh, I would hope that if they had other grounds than just that to take her away, but mm -hmm. that, like Marianne said, it's extreme to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I also think that regulations should be put in place about how, what, substances can be used just as in baseball with the use of steroids or any sport mm -hmm. what there are certain regulations for that and to make like to keep things fair and keep the playing field even martha do you think the child should have been taken away from the mother heavens yes that's ridiculous <laughs> so you think she we should didn't have. do that in our pageant we did our pageant to represent the counties of Ohio, and that was all it was for. Charlie, do you remember Ted MacArthur? Oh, yes. No, I remember well. Ted. His county was MacArthur, and he had Linnell be We Miss MacArthur. I remember Linnell. That was a long time ago. She must be. She teaches for me now. Oh, really? And she teaches over in Richwood the show choir. I remember Ted drove me in one of the popcorn parades once. Mm -hmm. uh, he was wonderful. Now, Charlie, should the child have been taken away from the mother? Well, I'm sure there are other mitigating circumstances other than just the Botox thing. 
I'm, I'm sure there was uh, something else going on. And well, if not? Well, if not, uh, I think she needs to be reprimanded. <laughs> I mean, injecting your child? I mean, injecting, that means putting a needle under the skin and yeah, injecting. Yeah, but I don't think the mother terrible. did it. Mm -hmm. Really? She had someone else do it? Well, I think a doctor. Oh, well. Maybe we should put the doctor in, in some trouble. Yeah. Well, I, I, it's, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe she did give it to her. I don't know, I haven't I seen the video. Mm -hmm. she, does that make a difference if a doctor gave it to her no, or if she did it? it doesn't make a difference, no. I don't think a doctor would do it. I really don't. Where do you get Botox? I don't know, that's a good question. You know, Botox is a derivation of a very uh, uh, pronounced poison. It is a poison. Yeah. yeah. It definitely it is, is a poison. Yes, it is a poison. But you know, the interesting thing here is, Mary Ann, we had a cosmetic surgeon on a few weeks ago, and, and you had said at some point you might consider... Not under the knife. She said I didn't have right, to go under the knife. No. no. No, I was wrong with you. She said ultrasound. <laughs> ultrasound. No, I wouldn't take Botox. You wouldn't do Botox. No. Well, I don't think so, no. But I would, I would love to see what that procedure is to have ultrasound to get rid of my cheeks. <laughs> but you know, so they, they could be up like that. You don't need it, Mary Ann. You're beautiful. <laughs> Incidentally, remember the doctor we had on with the freeze the fat. Freeze thing? the fat. I yes. saw another doctor with freeze the fat on television uh, last week. Same now, thing. Uh huh. Who? I don't know who regulates this stuff. Like I said, where do you get Botox? How do you learn how to freeze the fat? I don't know. We're going if, to, if you have a, I, I do want to mention this though, by the way. This is a talent competition, not a beauty pageant. Don't confuse the, confuse the two. If you have a talented uh, person or you have a, are a talented person, 16 years of age, you can log on to our Facebook page under The Exchange Marion. Like us, let us know your name, your talent, and your age and you might end up on this program performing your talent and become the first Ohio Entertainment Champion. Won't that be fun? Run to your computer. Don't walk as soon as we finish this program. And you know there are a lot of talented people in this community. How about that really are. Yeah. Why is it that most professional uh, lady singers are beautiful? Where are the ugly ones? Rosemary Clooney. <laughs> <Kennedy. laughs> I mean, they are. You, you have to be beautiful to be yeah, in front right. of the stage. How I really do. You? I mean, look at all the people on TV. I mean, you know, That's they're right. all beautiful. Yeah. Scott, how old? How old am I? How old For the talent. The talent. Oh, 16, 16 and older. Why don't you have them 12 and over? <laughs> we might amend the rules. Mark, <laughs> when, when the first lady of dance tells you to amend the rules, you might amend the rules. Well, okay. have I got some wonderful basketeers. <laughs> we might 16. 16. 16, you think? Yeah. I, will have I to think 16 should be the... Oh, I don't. I think it should be 12. <laughs> well, you probably have um, <laughs> some 16-year-olds that are very talented. Yes, I do. I'm sure you do. You want to go fishing? You just opened a can of water. <laughs> I did. Boy, it's going to come in. Let's get to the question this week. We've got two minutes left. Uh, how Have you ever been fired, and how did you overcome it, Chris and Mary? And I like this. Ooh. Charlie, have you ever been shown the door? Yes, a couple of times. <laughs> how do you handle that? That's rough. <laughs> that is. It's, it can uh, really uh, get you down mentally. Mm -hmm. uh, that's for sure. But, uh, yeah, one of my most disappointing times was I was fired as the director of the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Mm. What? There's yeah. a candle. That's <laughs> terrible. Yeah, that was, uh, and uh, of course I went on and uh, did other things. I've got more things. Of course I was getting old anyhow. Uh, people in my position at Convention and Visitor Bureaus were usually young girls around 23 years of age. And I kept telling everyone, I said, I, I don't think I'm going to be here too long because I'm not a girl and 23. How long did you serve as? Six years. Six years. Yes. Okay. Traveled all over the country uh, promoting Marion. I mean, big time. Did you? I even uh, uh, did uh, Warren G. Harding in Baltimore and uh, Indianapolis uh, to large groups there That's promoting cool. Marion. Were you shocked when the ax fell? Mm, no, not really, but uh, under the circumstances when it happened, I was, I guess. But I, I could see it coming. Charlie, and what's Warren G. Harding stand for? What's his name? Gamaliel. Gamaliel. 
My brother's is name amazing. is Gamel. He's a twin, and my mother named him after her president, mm -hmm. Grace Florence. Mary, Mary, Mary Ann, were you ever let go? No, I never have been. I can really be happy about that. But you know, I think failure is a good thing because I think you learn from your failures. And you a lot sure of people do. who have failure in their lives end up doing really well. So no, failure is not something that you should be afraid of or, or getting fired. You shouldn't be concerned about that because you have to have things happen in your life that are not so good in order to find the things that are really good. And um, But I was very fortunate. I, I've never been fired. I think it's interesting that, um, well, I just think that if you don't fail at some point in your life, how will you know if it wasn't luck? I think you should fail. I you think have to build you, yourself back up. I think so, too. Kate, uh, <laughs> you been let go at this point, 2022? 20, <laughs> no, and I guess in... I could relate to it by saying I've had a lot of no's in the job search right now. I just graduated two weeks ago from uh, Miami University and I'm in the job search right now. So it's been hard trying to find the right thing, but each time I get a no, I'm like, okay, then I need to change my look, like where mm -hmm. my direction to the to a little bit different place until I find the right job for me. This is a big thing. I mean, there are thousands of they, college graduates going through the identical yeah, thing. I, my dad told me 80% yeah. of college grads right. in my class. But it's a job them. looking for a job. It is it's a job. Sure it's it very tiring. Yeah. It, it, it really is. is. But you know something, Kate? I have complete confidence in you. Okay. You are going to do fine. Martha, before we get on out of I here. would hire you in a minute if, if I could hire you. <laughs> Thank you. Do you need any yard work that needs done? Mary? No, I need Martha. <laughs> she's a very smart young lady. Martha, before we wrap up, have you ever been fired in your life? I worked for Dr. Iker when I was 14. He was a chiropractor. I worked at the United States Depot in Shelby, Ohio, and I had a, I had a car take me over it. 5.30 in the morning, and I was going steady with Joe, but I was secretary there, and I never was fired from any job. <laughs> we went around the barn for that story, but it worked out okay. Yeah. If you have a question for the mailbag, join us on Facebook under the name The Exchange Marion, or email them to us at irmcommunication at gmail.com. Before we wrap up, though, Charlie, what's your feeling toward men who shave their heads? We love this. <laughs> I, I keep... I keep seeing men on TV and in papers and elsewhere with shaved heads, and I just have to kind of grin. I thought they'd, they'd make sure good. You remember the old-fashioned clothespins? The old-fashioned clothespins. Yeah. I'm going to bring a shaved head in here one I've day. got something to say. I'm glad your mother had you. I'm, well, I don't know if she can say the same, but we'll, we'll catch you next week. We're out of here. I laid it out there. Take two. <laughs>